Now, after the Hittites, we have the Elamites, which will end the third dynasty of Ur, will end uh, the Hittite rule in this in the uh, Mesopotamian era area for a while. And they have a queen by the name of Naper Asu. Uh, and this is a statue of her, which is rather interesting. We have a hollow cast copper shell filled with bronze. Now, I've told you in the past, earlier in this chapter, that the reason you hollow cast is to save resources. So why take a perfectly good hollow cast of a statue and fill it with bronze? Well, the reason is she wants this to be permanent. She wants to make this statue immovable by simply making it too heavy to haul away. What usually happens to metal statuary is it will be melted down for other uses to become coinage or in later times to become cannons or other weapons. So the idea is by filling it with bronze, it makes it so heavy you can't really move it. The Italians, incidentally, do the same thing during World War II. When the Germans start looting in 1943, after the Italians change sides, what happens is many of the churches, etc., will take wooden statues of great value, and they'll paint them, they'll marbleize them, to make them look like they're stone, so that the Nazi soldiers won't take them away, because they'll assume they're too heavy to be carried. Well, that's exactly what's happening here. This also gives us a portrait of an ideal queen at the time, uh, sort of this ideal form. And compared to the idealization that we see of the female body form in Western society today, this doesn't really compare. They're not trying to idealize her into the same form as today. Instead, we see a figure of strength and of dignity. We also see a figure of great power, even though she's missing an arm and she's lost her head in some form. 